Kate Pegg and welcome to the first episode of the Osmodo Show for 2022. Like you, I am so ready for a mammoth year of motorcycle racing ahead. It has been far too long between full seasons. So let's kick this into gear and get started. Coming up on today's show. The busiest bloke on two wheels, Husqvarna factory rider Todd Waters is in the studio to tell us about his wild year ahead, taking on the Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstore and the Yamaha Australian Off-Road Championship presented by MX Store. Desmo Sport Ducati's team co-owner Ben Henry is here to talk about his new rider, Brian Starring's unbelievable success at round one of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. And I catch up with the Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup as it enters its fourth year with some great new talent and a prestigious new coach, former 500cc MotoGP and World Superbike all-round legend Gary McCoy. Remember to follow along on socials using the handle and hashtag OzMotoShow. We'd love to hear from you, so get involved and get online. Let's tuck in. He's riding for the Husqvarna factory team. He's a Pro MX, Thor MX1 champion and an AORC rookie. Plus, he's achieved international success by standing on the podium of the FIM World MXGP. It's Todd Waters. Todd, welcome. It's fantastic to have you here. Thanks for having us, Kate. Uh, we've got a great view of my bike over here, Factory sure Husqvarna. <laughs> Done a ripper job. I can't wait to get on it. Oh, yes. Now, let's take it back to um, to last year because 2021, you had a really bonkers schedule planned. Uh, but things went wild and you finished up the championship for Primex in P3, but you also got one round in of AORC, which is very different racing. It was your first round. Tell me how, how different was the racing? What were your impressions of it? Yes, very, very different, Kate. But, uh, you know, it seemed like business as usual, stepping out of the factory Husqvarna rig, except I had a headlight on the front of my bike. Bike was a lot softer, and we had an oversized fuel tank, which I've never seen in my life. So it was, uh, was going to be a good day, three-hour race, but um, unfortunately, due to conditions, it turned out to be a sprint. And this is stuff I'm all learning about. So that's what I talk about being a rookie. It's, uh, I'm learning a lot about the off-road. Todd, 2022, you are back with a vengeance. The, it's game on now. AORC is, you know, we've, we've got the round coming up really soon uh, and Pro MX. So, so tell us about your year ahead. This year is going to be interesting. We've got uh, first round is going to be the off-road. So the first round the AORC. So we're preparing, testing bikes, getting ready for that, making sure that my body's in shape. Um, and in shape, I mean, you know, able to handle two days of racing, uh, back to back and longer riding periods. So I've got to be able to ride the bike for six hours, you know, for two days. Obviously we've got some sprint rounds, but that's the major challenge for me. And then the weekend after we're going to jump on the motocross bike and do 30 minute sprints with all the boys. So it's, uh, it's a juggling act, that's for sure. And the bike, because you need a really good bike to, to take yeah. you to the top step of these championships. Tell us about the package that you're on. Yeah, so first of all, that's why I choose Husqvarna, because they give me an all-round good bike on the motocross track and on the off-road track. Um, you know, we don't have to try and turn a bike into something to race the off-road. I just pull it from a dealer's shop, I chuck my suspension setting in it, and away we go. So that's probably the ease of riding for Husqvarna this year. Um, but the biggest thing for me has been the tyre testing. So we've been doing a lot of hours with Maxxis developing tyres here in Australia. So that's probably one of the things um, that I've really been working on is the, the tyres and obviously suspension. That's a new one for me racing off-road. Um, I haven't had to deal with rocks and tree roots and riding down massive mountains across trees. Um, so I've had to try and you know, meet a happy medium where off-road guys run a really soft bike, but I'm used to riding a hard bike. Um, because in motocross, when the ground's soft and ripped, when you're coming down, you're using a lot of brakes for a corner, so the forks are just diving into the front wheel. So we hold, we hold it up with uh, compression dampening in the fork. So off-road's not really the case because it's very skatey and uh, different kind of riding. So lots of changes, lots of learning. It's exciting. So one Thaggy, tell me a bit about what we can expect from that race. 
Well, one thaggy, I'm going there. It's uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the only dude on the start line. I can't control. You know, we hear Kyle Webster, you know, smoking everyone. Um, you know, these guys, these guys. I don't fall into that stuff anymore. It's uh, as long as I go there, I'm comfortable on my bike. I'm feeling fit and healthy. That's all I can ask for. And I feel like I'm becoming stronger. I've had some good pre-season racing. I feel my speed's on pace. We haven't tapped into sprint work yet, so um, my program's solid. I've got a good plan. I'm sticking to it, so I'm excited for the year. Yeah, you've got your eyes on the prize. It's yep, good. Long term. But speaking about a serious prize, April, um, Queensland will be AORC and Pro MX in the same weekend. So you're going to yeah. do like 12 hours of enduro <laughs> riding into a Pro MX route. Can you talk to me what yeah. you're thinking there? How awesome, but <laughs> like honestly, for me, you know, when I jumped on a plane and went to Europe, all I did was motos, motos till my arms were going to fall off. All I wanted to do as a young kid was show Hasvana, the, the team manager, auntie, that, you know, I'm going to work harder than anyone. And that's been my philosophy my entire career. Like, it's pretty exciting. No one's done it before. And um, that's what excites me is just the challenge. Oh, it's just a lot to wrap your brain around. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. But yeah. talk to me about who you've done a little bit of pre-season racing. Um, who are your biggest rivals? Do you, who do you see as being really strong this season? Well, you know, Kirk Gibbs. I haven't seen Kirk Gibbs yet. He's back on KDM. Um, Kirk and I have raced since under-19s, and we know that he's always there. So he's probably my biggest, my biggest threat. Um, but then you've got Cloudy with the number one. He's defending that. He wants to keep that. I want it back. So that's going to be cool. But we've got Kyle Webster, and that's what everyone's talking about. You know, he's, uh, he lives and breathes one thaggy. That's our first round. So that's going to give him some momentum. Um, I'm excited to race him there. We just, we raced each other uh, last weekend, which was uh, good to just see Kyle where he's at. Um, gives me some stuff to work on and prepare for uh, the first round. Yeah, MX2 reigning champ. It's exciting to see what's yeah. going to go down there. But also, you've been overseas. Um, tell me about when you were a little kid. What was that moment where you dared to dream that you could actually make it? Um, you could make it in with the big, big crews. Yeah, I couldn't even dream that big actually. And that was the, that's I guess this story is uh, sitting on on my parents' deck, eating breakfast with my dad, and and looking at Andrew McFarlane in the magazine. Him and his wife uh, traveling the world championship in a motorhome and they had this this like 12 page spread and I just I'll never forget it I can feel the book I just I looked at it and I just said dad imagine doing this like you know I'm going to be a cabinet maker but imagine if you could like ride this because I was you know I was winning Aussie titles but it wasn't my family didn't drive me they didn't we didn't think you got paid to ride bikes like it was just a pure family thing and a hobby for us so dad said mate you can do whatever you want you put your mind out you want to do that you'll be able to do it. And then, uh, what was it, 10, 15 years later, um, there was an opportunity. I had a motorhome over in Europe and, and Jill come back to study. So I said, hey, mum and dad, there's an opportunity. I'd love you to come over, drive the motorhome, come race world championships with me. And then we're driving through Switzerland, going to Arco de Trento. And I was just, I was driving the motorhome and I look over at dad and I was like, we're doing it. We're doing it, dad. And we're both like nearly in tears and, it was, uh, that's, that's the most special moment my whole, my whole life. All right, Todd, thank you so much for joining us. I cannot wait to see what you achieve this year. And don't you go away because very soon we have Desmo Sport Ducati co-owner Ben Henry joining us and we check in with the Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup kids. Catch you soon. Red lights are on. Superbikes are go for 2022. Great start from Wayne Maxwell. Well, Maxwell certainly isn't running away with it at the moment. Starring seems to have his pace. It's early days as they head around Yamaha. Richard Hart out corner. A couple of movements there in the suspension. But uh, nevertheless, up the inside, that's Arthur Cecis who's made a move on uh, Daniel Fowles on. Maxwell's got issues. Maxwell's got issues. Brian Starring is leading the race and Maxwell is falling back. He's crashed at turn eight. Looks like he's just pushed that little bit too hard and lost the front. His first race on board the Desmo Sport Ducati and he takes the win on board bike number 67. The battle for the rest of the podium looks like Crew Halliday is going to get the drive to the line. And there's those tears I was telling you about.
<laughs> How happy is Brian Starry? <laughs> Superbikes are go, Steve, as we make our way up to the Melbourne Bridge and down towards Turn 1 for the first time. Maxwell got a great jump off the line. Looks like Josh Waters has also got a cracking start as well, starring as he was in race number one. Second place as they tick through Turn 1. Aiden Wagner coming down the inside, Speedway style on Jed Metcher. Well, that's Aiden that's Wagner at his best. Well, Brian Starring is going to have to put in an incredible last lap to hold off a hard charging through Halliday, but he's done the best he can to get a great drive out of Turn 12. Crew's able to pull up on the brakes. Crew's gone up the inside. Turn four, starring ran what was that? A couple of feet wide, and Crew Halliday said thanks very much once again. The grunt of the Ducati onto the straight for the final time. I think starring may just hang on to second place, but Maxwell takes the win. Starring should take second. Crew Halliday will get on the podium as well in third place. Wow, what a weekend. And our next guest is the man from the team who made the biggest impression of round one of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. It's Ben Henry from Desmo Sport Ducati. Ben, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Now, you had a pretty wacky, wild weekend. Let's talk about that race win because Brian had only had seven days on the bike. New team, a lot to get your head around. Um, tell us about the win, but overall a really successful race weekend. We turned up not really knowing what to expect. Like, yes, we'd had seven days of testing in a very short time frame, and we weren't too sure really how it was going to pan out, but... As the weekend went on, I could feel like maybe we were in with a bit of a chance um, of being on, on the podium, and as it panned out, we are on the top step. Yeah, you did okay. Yeah, not bad. And pulling into Parc Ferme, uh, we just saw so much emotion and tears from Brian. It was really beautiful. Can you talk me through why he, why he reacted like that? Well, we're blokes. We haven't talked about it. Um, <laughs> so we haven't really said much, but my guess is, is that... Um, after spending so long not being able to be competitive to win um, and maybe not even knowing if he could do it anymore, just realising the fact that he was still as good as he probably imagined he was, it was uh, confronting for him and he broke down a bit. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I did cry a bit myself when I had my sonnies on just to make sure no one saw, but yeah, it was... Uh, Ah, geez, it, it's been a long time between drinks and it, it means a lot to us all, so it was cool. Oh, that's really, really beautiful. Um, but looking at your at the lap times that um, that Brian was doing and the performance on the bike, is this is this a championship winning bike and team? Can you take it to Wayne Maxwell? Yes, it is. And yes, our team is very, very strong uh, and we definitely can take it um, to whoever is going to uh, be the ones to beat. Yes, we can. Well, let's take it back a little bit for you, Ben, because you're a professional racer yourself as well. <laughs> well professional's a loosely used word there, but yes, carry on. Uh, you then changed tack yep. and uh, started Cube uh, as a race team, and yep. then you moved into Desmo Sport Ducati with Troy Bayless, who's a three-time World Superbike champ. Yep. How did that come together? Obviously, the, the Cube team was running, and um, I had a guy in the team that Troy had... Um, put in the team with me, a uh, kid by the name of Robbie Menzies. And um, so I don't know if it was Troy's way of dipping his foot in the water and just seeing, um, but he was, I was looking after Robbie on his behalf. Troy was, Troy was paying his bills for him to ride for us, which is really cool. And it's just a, of like a, a, a part of who Troy is. Troy is always looking after people. Um, and then 2015, I was out riding my push bike. Troy sent me a text. Got my text. Do you want to start a team together? I'm like, uh, I think, yeah, that's a good idea. Yep, we'll do that. So I rang him up. Troy, yep, good idea. Done. It was that simple. Wow. Just yeah. like that. That's how you roll. And Ollie obviously came from mm -hmm. this, you guys coming together. Ollie Bayless, his son. Yep. Um, so he's gone now to World Supersport. Yep. But... He started with you in Cube yep. at, like, the age of 12. So d tell me about you, you saw him progress and, and achieve and, um, and win. How much of his talent is innate and how much is from having a three-time World Superbike champ as a father coach? I think kids like him that grow up in that environment, they, they only know, like, they're led by, you're led by example no matter what, but... When you just see that's what happens, that's just what they go and do. And obviously his dad won a lot 
So it just it doesn't it doesn't compute to him. I don't reckon to, to not be that way. And 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 he's just been he's just seen the steps that his dad's taken, um, or, or the way his dad operated um, to be successful. And it just that's what he knows. So that's what he does. And it's a good it's a good head start for him. And he is very similar to Troy in the way he does things, um, I reckon. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds for him over there in Europe. Now, the ASBK paddock, um, there's a big... You've got your multiple winning um, riders, such as Wayne. Um, Brian Starring has won one as well. Yeah. Um, where, how do we bridge that gap between... Um, those top tier riders, and there's quite a few of them at that age, and the next generation. In short, I would say that 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 process has started. MA have put in some really good initiatives with um, Oceania Carp, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and all the little steps getting there. They started really with the 300 class. Australia's been looking for a, a 250 priority class for a long time to to make the riders, you know, and um, I think 300 class is a part of it. Then they were like, mm, we need something more. Oceania Cup. I reckon we're about another three or four years away from seeing the results of that, but the work's been done. And as long as we keep up the good work, I reckon there'll be a lot of real, real fast, early team, like 17, 18 year old kids that are gonna be pretty special. It's exciting things to come. It is, I'm really excited because it frustrates me, you know, when I see all the old blokes that like, I was racing against them, and I've been retired for seven years. I'm like, man, just like move on, go and go and mow your lawn or something. I don't have anything bad to say about them. I'm just saying, like, hurry up and someone race these blokes and get them off those bikes. But they're so fast. Yeah, they're like, fast. You but... can't, you can't, you can't get past Wayne. Yeah, you know, Glenn is right up there. Yeah. like it, it is unbelievable. They get faster and faster as they get older and older. They don't get any faster. The bikes get faster. The bikes get more grip. The riders, they're the same. Now your work is never done as a as a team owner and manager. You were sticking around at Phillip Island because you had a Ducati track day to yes. do, which sounded excellent. And I think I need to come next time. Where was my invite? It got lost in the mail. Well, you should have been there. Day was perfect. Weather was good. Ducatis everywhere. All the Ducatisti. It was unreal. Um, it, it's something really good that Ducati are doing. Now Ducati are importing Ducati themselves and they're trying to bring that whole uh, Ducati experience to the, to the current customers and also entice more customers. But it is unreal. They can go there and just be immersed in everything Ducati. And it's just like an experience you'd never forget. Like, yes, you can ride your bike on the circuit, but there's just so much going on. There's a simulator and the... Uh, um, you know, we had a helicopter there filming and, and chasing Brian down the straight and just being able to stand on the pit wall and watch Brian go past wide open in the top gear. There's a, a million things going on that you can just get lost in the day and it's just really, really cool. <laughs> now, Queensland Raceway we yep. have coming up next. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we can expect from that. We are in a good position there. It was the first... The last day that we tested there was Brian's first time of feeling comfortable on that bike. And it happened towards the end of the second day. He found his feet and started to go fast. And uh, I think that we're in good stead there. Brian's results there a long time ago, but the last time he raced there was Superbike. He won them both. The year before, he raced 600 there. He won them both too. So he's fast there. He will be very good there. Um, and I hope that we can uh, we can take two wins and, and extend the championship lead, but the championship doesn't stress me too much for now. It's just more about race by race. Exactly, step by step, that's yeah. how you do it. Methodical, that's yeah, how you've yeah. taken the wins before. Well, Ben Henry, thank you so much for chatting. That was a really interesting uh, conversation. And Queensland Raceway, next weekend, 18th to 20th of March. It's going to be huge. Thanks for joining us, Ben. After the break, I catch up with the Blue Crew, Oceana Junior Cups, Fast Kids. Stick around, you don't want to miss it. To get to racing's elite level and end up like MotoGP's Jack Miller, then you need to start young. 
and in order to do that, you need the right support to get out on track. And that is exactly what the Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup is doing right now. The level that it's grown, uh, it's, it's actually surprised us. I mean, the, we had this vision of where we were hoping to be after three years. Uh, we've come through those first three years, also being COVID, but the result has been fantastic. 60 kids of that, we've had five go off over to Asia Talent Cup. We've had two go off over to Red Bull Rookies Cup. There's around nine, 10 kids over racing in Europe somewhere, doing some sort of amazing experience. And then in, in domestically, if you look at the 300 field, more than 50% of the top runners are OJC kids and they're filtering through at this amazing rate and now at this stage in our fourth year we're starting to see some of those kids now filter into the 600 class as well. So the success story couldn't have been any better. We have some real core sponsors that continue to grow with us. FIM Oceania has continued not only to continue to support us but to grow that investment in the program. You know, we've got real key sponsors like Recondi who come from the start and have been with us all the way, but we've got a number of new sponsors on board as well. Dunlop's come on board, Shark, and as well as that, we've now got Speed Angle involved as well, IRC tyre warmers. But the icing on the cake for us this year is, is scoring Gary McCoy as a coach for the kids. To get somebody of that calibre involved in the program, so passionate about what we're doing, and the opportunities that he can bring and develop with these kids, and you can see that connection already developing. So it's an amazing opportunity for them. This year, the opportunity became available again. Um, and I just thought, you know, what better way than uh, come out and help these young guys and share my experience of the sport to them. There's so many things they need to learn in this sport to, you know, go places. You know, whether it's riding the bike, whether it's off track, uh, training, nutrition. Uh, you know, there's kids here that I'm coaching now that are unbelievably fast, you know, and uh, some of them have got dirt bike back background experience and um, that definitely helps a little bit. Some of the other guys haven't even ridden a dirt bike and they're just so talented and get on with the job. So how did you get started in OJC? Me and my dad have driven over from WA and we're going to spend um, three months here and um, do the three rounds over here, over east. Well, my dad's been racing for eight to nine years now and I've been helping him out in the pits and um, being his pit crew, so I've just thought, yeah, I'll give it a shot too. It's our favourite sport or hobby that I've done of all. And what do your friends at school think about you being a rock star motorcycle racer? I always get messages from my mates saying how good I am. They don't know much about it at all, um, but they are, they think it's kind of scary and weird how I do this. They're, they don't um, know anything about it. They think it's easy, you just sit there on a bike. No. <laughs> it's really great. Um, these bikes are awesome. And I love the tracks and how fast the bikes go and how smooth the bikes are when you're riding. Great stuff there from the OJC Talent Factory. Fast kids. Now let's take a look ahead to the 2022 Motorcycling Australia calendar. Pro MX kicking off round one in Wonsaggy. Can't wait for a mega eight rounds of racing there and keeping it in the dirt. Round one kicks off in Queensland of AORC. 12 rounds for 2022, bring that on. And ASBK, we've got round one at Phillip Island already under our belt with a total of eight rounds for the year. For all the details, check out the Championships websites. Now that's all we've got time for today. A huge shout out to all of our Aussies racing overseas, including Joel Kelso, Remy Gardner and Jack Miller, who have kicked off the MotoGP and Moto3 season. Good luck to you boys for the rest of the year. And we'll see you next time on the Moto Show. Stay safe, catch you there.